Joining us now is Trump campaign manager Kellyanne Conway, communications director Jason Miller. I got to get all you Millers on the campaign straightened out here. Um, one of the things that really just stood out, how annoying. Tim Kaine was tonight. My goodness, it was shocking, even to those who don't really care for him. I mean, Tim Kaine spent all of his time interrupting and actually ignoring the moderator, a female moderator. I'd like to remind the left who loves to throw away word, uh, throw around words like sexist and unhinged. And, uh, and but Mike Pence kept his calm, and he was there to talk about issues and substance, and he did that. And I think if personnel is policy, the way Ronald Reagan famously always said, Sean, yeah. that we saw tonight that the first execution of judgment and leadership by Donald Trump after he became the Republican nominee. He was what to select Mike Pence to run on his ticket as his vice president, and I think tonight you saw the fruits of that. Yeah, no. well, you're, all right, you're the communications expert here. It's not me. I've only been in radio 30 years, and I'm starting my 21st year at Fox. From a communication standpoint, to constantly interrupt, it was really bad uh, for Senator Kane to do this, and I think the the calm and even uh, feel that uh, Governor Pence had this evening really uh, allowed the viewers, the people at home, the voters to get a sense of what the message was, and that's what ultimately with our ticket, that's what matters. It's the message. It's Mr. Trump and Governor Pence's message of restoring our economy, uh, protecting our country. That's what came through tonight. The only thing that people saw from Senator Kane uh, was a lot of interruptions, and I think it looked pretty pretty poor. One of the things that's very clear from the strategy, just as an outside observer, is they want to dump the kitchen sink and only talk about the kitchen sink of Donald Trump. Um, I think it was the Washington Post that described it as he's trying to put 10 pounds of sand in a yeah, five-pound five bag. bag. Right. Well, and it looked awkward. I mean, I hope that Tim Kaine was promised some kind of fabulous prize every time he vomited out the string of <laughs> talking points and canned responses. I wish I said vomited out. Why didn't I pick up on that? They weren't. I mean, they weren't funny, and they weren't particularly effective because they were so non-responsive to the question being asked. If you're watching at home, Sean, you saw the actual question that was posed by the moderator and then Tim Kaine's answer, and the two did not meet. At least, at least Mike Pence was able to answer the question. And so, but but this has been their strategy all along. What do we talk about every single week together? That our campaign is about issues and their campaign is about us. And if you time is running out now, it's a great test in the remaining month. A great test for America. Do you want this election to be about issues and be about you, or do you want it to be about Donald Trump and about the insults that Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine bring to bear? But honestly, this is the whole thing. Now, it was interesting from another standpoint, issues that didn't come up in the first debate, vetting refugees, immigration, really digging into this bad Iranian deal, so on and so forth. It seems that on issues, that's where you want to be. That's where the Trump campaign is. Does this wear thin in the next two debates if Hillary continues to regurgitate robotically or vomit out uh, those lines? Yeah. Well, it does, and I, I think we do have to cut Tim Kaine a little bit of slack this evening. I mean, I, I think it's tough for anyone to get up there and try to defend Hillary Clinton's record, uh, to try to defend her on the emails and the FBI, to try to defend her on illegal immigration, uh, to try to defend her on making the world less safe. I mean, that's, a, that's a tough job, and so uh, I'll, I'll cut uh, Senator Kane just a little bit of slack on that one, but it goes to really what this movement is that Mr. Trump and, and Governor Pence are leading. You know, I watched in the first debate, Donald Trump, I thought, answered a few questions he didn't need to answer, the birther question or issues about his taxes, because, and I thought Governor Pence really highlighted this point, this economy is not good. You've got 12 million more Americans now on food stamps, 8 million more in poverty, and in both debates, Hillary and Senator Kane make it sound like everything's going great. What? Where are they living? Well, they live in their own minds, and in fact, uh, that's exactly my point, that if we will win on the issue set, we have the dynamic, magnetic, compelling messengers, plus the issue set, we win. And that's why we're really highly competitive in states like Ohio and Iowa and Florida, these states that, you know, Romney and McCain both lost, Colorado, Donald Trump was there today, yesterday he was in Colorado, you, know, you can't even get into the arena. Today in Arizona, they said people waited outside since yesterday to get to, I say, he's like the most successful, um, he's like the most successful a performer who's never had, never played an instrument in all these venues. Usually you have to come with like a singing voice and a piano or a guitar to pack him in like he does. And the media leads up to say crowds don't matter. Yes, they do because enthusiasm and momentum matter. And I think what, you know what else opponents are going to say tonight? That's how we know Governor Pence had a great night. They're going to say, you know, the VP debate never really matters. It's not going to move the needle. That's how you know Governor Pence did a great job. Look, in, in the span of 24 hours, what happened? Hillary Clinton's husband, Bill Clinton, trashed Obamacare, embarrassed her out in the Trail. And then her running mate here tonight, uh, I think, delivered a very lackluster, very uneven performance where he just looked like he was unhinged and interrupting. 
There's no to that. Uh, that. That one's tough to top, but uh, I mean, you see there can't be that much energy and enthusiasm uh, for Clinton and Kane coming out of tonight. I mean, it's a choice election. This is now a choice on every big issue of our time. Say radical Islam, not. Obamacare, keep it or leave it. Um, immigration, build the wall, don't bring it. Education, states, or you top down from the federal government. Uh, on the economy, raise taxes, cut taxes. Supreme Court, originalist or judicial activist. It's, these are real choices. 35 days, this country is going to make a very important choice. It is. And if you want to change, Trump and Pence, that's where it's going to be. Yeah. How big? percent of Americans agree. I mean, 70% of Americans say they want to take the country in a new and different direction. That makes the issue very clear. And I think the other thing we saw tonight is that Mike Pence, even though he's known to be calm and he's known to be low-key, you know, Indiana nice, he was not taking it when Tim Kaine was lying about Donald Trump or lying about Governor Pence. And, uh, and I think what I liked about Mike Pence tonight is he tapped into what Donald Trump always says, is let's give our voice to the forgotten man or forgotten woman. When he said to Tim Kaine, do you really think things are going well in this country, are going well? In do you really pay more taxes than you're supposed to? <laughs> exactly. Do you really? So I, I think we ought to have a drinking game. The drinking game is every single time they regurgitate robotically the attack, I think, all right, you yeah. take a shot. The problem is within 10 minutes, we'll all be on the floor. <laughs> we stopped counting the interruptions out in the, in the whole... Well, we just we stopped counting them. Oh, we montage them. We have the whole thing. Yeah, we put them all together. No, but by the way, he was interrupting the moderator, but he was also ignoring her. I want to make that point, too. And I want to make that point as a woman because I don't believe in gender politics at all, but boy, does If Donald matter. Trump did it, boy, Mike Pence did it. Right, that's right. If they had done it, that's all you would hear about. That's all we heard about last week, I think, unfairly so. And uh, look, I talked to you last night, too. Why is Hillary Clinton at only 53% among women in the new CNN poll? What in the world is holding the, holding the I have a real last important question, because a lot of people thought, all right, after Judge Curiel, after the con issue, why did he go back to Alicia Machado? He was trying to say that he has actually, he gave her a second chance, and he felt like he was very treated very unfairly, and Hillary Clinton obviously threw that in there at the end, and that he was being attacked. But I will tell you, I always feel Donald Trump is at his best when he's talking about the horrors of Obamacare, when he's talking about building the wall, when he's talking about the Syrian refugee policy, when he's talking about destroying radical Islam, when he's talking about creating jobs, and the trade and immigration access that he has been able to bring to the forefront of the voters' consciousness. Business, Sean. That's what got him to be the nominee, and that's what Americans want to hear. When I go out to the rallies, Jason will tell you, when he starts riffing on repeal and replace Obamacare, defeat Obama, people are on their feet. That's what they want to hear, and that's what distinguishes him from the failed that's policies the, of Obama Clinton. That's a good point. All right, guys, good to see you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Tell the other Miller hi, and thanks, Kelly, and good to see you.